live action y'all where y'all been no i guess i've been gone what up y'all dr pine said here and today we're talking about caffeine coffee y'all how many of you guys are coffee heads but still can't seem to get your focus up get your excitement up get your energy levels up how many of y'all don't not sure you're like man i get a good kick from my caffeine but then i fall flat right in the middle of my studying right in the middle of my test how can i balance it out well today we're gonna talk about caffeinating effectively y'all caffeinating effectively. Uh, if you guys want to learn about this, this is the video for you. We're gonna go through three key tips, real simple, real quick to help you get your caffeine right, to help you with your grades, help you with productivity. Let's hit the intro and then we'll get right into it, y'all. What I teach you guys is transformation. If you didn't dominate, changes need to be made. So I give you guys entire systems that make you new. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. All right, y'all. Dr. Pine said here, the study doc. And as always, guys, what are we here? What are we here for? We're here for productivity. We're here for positivity. We're help you, here to help you be better students, better pre-meds, get to your goals. And today we're talking about coffee and using it effectively. And if you've been paying attention to the news lately, they've been talking about psychedelics and mind stimulation and all these kind of things. And the number one mind stimulant, right? The psychedelic of choice for most of us is coffee. And I say that jokingly, but it's serious. Y'all. I was watching an interview uh, with Joe Rogan and Michael Pollan. And I don't know if you guys know Michael Pollan. You guys are like, I actually, back in the day, I was a biochemistry major and I was super in nutrition and health, right? I was doing athletics. I was trying to be an athlete, all kind of stuff. And one of the books that I have loved for forever is uh, Michael Pollan's book, uh, In Defense of Foods. Uh, in, in Eater's Manifesto, and it's an incredible book talking about the power of your diet and your nutrition, how what you take into your body affects your performance, in, in, both in terms of acutely, but then also affects your longevity of your life, right? So here, what up, Utham, what's going on? Um, so uh, he was having this interview with Joe Rogan, and he talked about our society and how we over-caffeinate and how when he took a break from coffee for three months and he got back on the coffee train, he said when he first had that first sip of coffee, it was like floating on a cloud. It was so tingly all over his body. He felt incredible, got that rush uh, from his coffee. And so coffee truly is one of those stimulants that if we're not used properly, it can do great things for you guys. There's lots of health benefits and it has lots of benefits for your life and your productivity. But if you use it wrong, guys, it can be terrible for your student lives. So we're gonna go through some tips. And I thought the first way to, to kind of get started and understand why we use caffeine and, and why it's important when you use it is to understand that we as human beings are cyclical. Do we all understand this, right? We, we, we live in cycles, right? We're awake, we're asleep, <laughs> we're half awake, half asleep, right? We're in that drowsy phase. So we go through waves in our day of stages of alertness, right? And what determines how alert we are throughout our day, right? Why are we, why are we geeked up in the morning? Why are we sundowning in the evening? What determines, right? What, what makes us feel tired? What makes us feel awake? What's going on? Why are we cyclical beings? What drives that? Angela, hello, Justice, Nadine, Vanessa, what up, y'all? Christian in the building. Christian, you sent me an email today talking about uh, we had a coaching session last week, and Christian is in the process of preparing, applying to medical school, and gearing up for medical school. And we had a great coaching session on Thursday, and so uh, Christian learned a lot. I'm excited that you learned a lot. I'm excited for you to get into medical school. We can celebrate that. Uh, Bradford, what up? So what makes our body cycle, right? It's our hormones, obviously, right? Our hormones, right? The principal one that drives it, there we go, melatonin and cortisol are the two. And cortisol is the major driver in our body of this cycle, right? Our circadian rhythms, as people call them. And I wanted to pull this up for you guys. I'm gonna do a screen share here. Oh, it's working, y'all. We're getting fancy right now. Can everybody see my screen? Can everybody see this chart up here? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. Everybody can see this? <clears throat> All right, Chauncey, I'm glad you could use some knowledge. Yeah, I'm always here. Guys, we're on this YouTube channel. I'm live regularly, or I will be going forward. And I have tons of videos. So guys, make sure you check these videos out, getting this free knowledge. And you, if this is your first time here, Chauncey, since it's your first time, make sure you like this video. Let me know that you guys are enjoying this. You guys are benefiting from this. And subscribe to this channel so you guys get informed. All right, so I thought this would be nice to see as a nice visual. Let me keep zooming in. And let me scoot this over. Let me see if I can do this properly. Oh, it worked. So fancy today. Uh, so diurnal cortisol curve. So when we wake up in the morning, guys, we have this cortisol spike. 
And cortisol is what we would consider our stress hormone. But a lot of times we incorrectly assume that all stress is bad. Actually, stress is urgency, stress is drive, stress is movement, is motivation, y'all, right? And we talk about our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous systems, and we say sympathetic is fight or flight. Well, if you are a student and you're trying to survive at a high level, it is fight mode, it is flight mode. You've got to move, you got to take the action. So having a little stress in your life is good and productive, and having functional cortisol patterns matters. And so if we look at normal cortisol patterns, you see here the amount per ml of blood that it goes up in the morning, it's highest, right? It peaks a little bit after you wake up, uh, about an hour to be precise, and then it goes down throughout the day, all the way down until it's time to sleep. And what you don't see here in this curve is that melatonin, right, our sleepy hormone, which now a lot of people take as a supplement, right, the opposite of caffeine, goes up in the evenings, which makes us tired, makes us sundown, makes us wanna go to sleep. And so this is our normal pattern. And the reason I thought this would be a cool thing to pull up is because, if you go down here, this is where a lot of you guys live. <laughs> and this chronic stress pattern, pull it up here, this chronic stress pattern, you guys live here where it actually interrupts this chronic stress, this chronic worrying, this chronic anxiety. It affects your cortisol patterns and therefore will affect your ability to perform during the day and also affect your ability to sleep at night. So your chronic stress is causing a problem. And then I love this one here, burnout. Oh guys, you guys know I'm on burnout all the time. How many of you guys live in a state of burnout, which is why you tuned in to this caffeine talk, because you're like, caffeine is the only thing that saves me from how burnt out, how dead I feel inside. The caffeine brings me back to life. Um, well, this is burnout. And if you look here, what's crazy about this is when you live in this burnout pattern, right, where you're always going, you're never stopping, you feel overwhelmed by everything, you actually are able to affect your hormone levels. And so if you look, this is the normal range right here in the blue, where you're existing, you're right here at this dot, right there, that's you. Pop, pop, pop. Your cortisol doesn't spike like it should, so you don't have the energy, that zest. So when you get out of the morning in the bed, when you get out of bed in the morning and you feel like, man, I just can't go on, it might be because you're in this burnout mode. You're exhausted and it's actually affecting how you feel, how you're existing is affecting your hormone expression. And so I have to pay attention to that, right? So if we start there and we understand that we live in these patterns, the problem, right, that many of you guys experience with your caffeine is that you guys think caffeine is the solution to everything. It's the end all be all. It doesn't matter how bad I feel, how crappy I feel, how tired I feel, no matter what I've done today, no matter what I face, caffeine's gonna save me. And that's the wrong way to think about caffeine and stimulants and supplements to your diet. It all has to go into the complete picture of everything you're doing. And our bodies naturally wanna be awake, right? We wake up in the morning, we peak in the morning, and then we go down, and we sundown, and we go to sleep in the evenings. That's our natural wave, if you will, of our body and our curve in our day. And the problem with you guys when you guys caffeinate is that you don't take into consideration this natural rhythm, these natural waves, and you try to fight it. And the equivalent, guys, is to think about your body and the way you are in your hormones as waves in the ocean. So you are an ocean, and the waves are coming in. And what many of you guys do is you fight the natural currents, the natural tides of the ocean. You think you're the ocean master, but you ain't no Aquaman. You ain't no Jason Momoa. I've seen Jason Momoa. He's dead sexy. You ain't no Jason Momoa, but you think you can control the ocean. If you want to be successful in your caffeine, in your lifestyle, and in your habits, think about ways that you can build habits that feed in, that lean in to your natural waves and enhance them. Okay? And so that's how we're going to frame this entire conversation about caffeine is that we're thinking, listen, we're not going to break what is there, our natural rhythms. We can't do it. Stop trying to fight it. Right? If you want to catch waves at the ocean, you want to be a surfer, my kid's going to surf camp right now, he's standing up, he's riding the waves, he's got to get with the wave, the right timing, all those kind of things. That's what we do with our caffeine. So the first thing to know about your caffeine is our first tip is one, do not drink caffeine first thing in the morning and do not drink caffeine after 3 p.m. And that's a rough cutoff, y'all. It depends on when you're sleeping, all those kind of things. But roughly, do not drink caffeine when you first wake up and do not drink caffeine after 3 p.m. Why do I say those things? And I like that you brought that up, Christian. Christian asked, is burnout a dopamine deficiency? It can be. So there are numerous hormones that work together to give us happy, happy, good feelings going on. Serotonin, dopamine, all these up hormones. And when you are perturbed, when you are burnt out, when you are stressed out, when you are not nutritionized properly, that's a word, don't worry about it. Nutritionized properly, you throw off these hormones. You lose that dopamine. You lose that serotonin, right? So we got to put it back on. On top. And Devin, I think you sent me an email about third shifters. Don't worry, I got you. I wrote it down. You sent me an email about third shifters in caffeine. We're going to talk about that. 
Don't let me get there. Let me get there, y'all. Right? If you guys, <laughs> I'm here for you guys. So I saw your comment. Everybody can hear me loud and clear. We're all good. Okay. So uh, when we talk about not drinking coffee in the morning, not drinking coffee at night, how many of you guys struggle to get to sleep at night? How many of you guys feel like your brain has been dysfunctional all day and then it's time to go to sleep and your brain want to have a party? It's banging on all the things you got to do or you didn't do that day. And you got to do tomorrow and you struggle and you flubble and you're sitting there and you're tossing and turned in bed and you can't get to sleep and you wonder why. What if I told you that that caffeine in your afternoon, in your evening is inhibiting your ability to sleep? And as I said, many of us look at caffeine as the solution to everything. It's just going to solve everything. But the reality is, guys, is that we're not addressing the actual root issue. And someone said root cause analysis earlier today of why you're so sleepy, of why you're so exhausted. And it goes into your habits. And the very first thing I tell all my students, what's the number one thing? If we want to be high level students that we have to value. We have to value sleep. Sleep, y'all. Getting good sleep will change your grades. One of the first habits I changed when I want to be a great student was I got to sleep at a reasonable time. Why? Because if I get to sleep at a reasonable time, I can get up at a reasonable time and I can still be well rested. So getting eight hours of sleep a night allowed me to go through college, allowed me to go through medical school, not needing coffee. <laughs> Right. No coffee in undergrad, no coffee in medical school. I finally started drinking coffee in residency because it's just it's impossible. Right. You're working 80 hours a week. You're working 24 hour shifts. You need a little something to get, pick you up. But I can get through college and through medical school without coffee. How? Because I slept. The reason you need that coffee is because you aren't sleeping well. And so if we have coffee too late in the evening, it actually impacts our sleep. And one of the studies I found actually showed that whether you're drinking your coffee, so people are like, oh, well, why don't you get too close to bedtime? So whether you drink coffee at zero, three, six, or nine hours before bedtime, and in this study, they used, they used 400 milligrams of caffeine, which is right around what a cup of coffee is, a little bit less maybe, right? Zero, three, six, or nine hours before bedtime, any of that affected your sleep objectively and also subjectively. So it affected the quality of your sleep, both in terms of the length of the amount of sleep you get. It affected how quickly you were able to initiate sleep, causing sleep latency is what we call it, where you have difficulty falling asleep. Right. It also led to even once you were asleep to poor quality of sleep. It's the reality. And for some of you guys, you're saying like, nah, I can drink coffee. It doesn't affect me. I'm all good. The equivalent. And this happened <laughs> was what I thought of when I was thinking about this was the encounter I had with a patient last week. Patient comes in. He's getting a, a, a he's coming in for a cardio version. So this patient is in atrial fibrillation. Their heart is beating out of control in the wrong way. It's malfunctioning. And they're, they have this atrial fibrillation because they've been using meth, methamphetamine. And so they come in and we're gonna do a cardio version where we shock their heart and put their heart back into the proper rhythm. And so before we do the procedure, I go up and say, hey, sir, I'm Dr. Pines, I'll be your anesthesiologist today. And I just wanna learn a bit about your history so that I can take care of you, blah, blah. And I'm starting walking through his health history. I'm like, yeah, so is there anything, you know, that you're just kind of concerned about that you wanna talk about or any health issues I think I should know about that we didn't cover? And he's like, yeah, you know, actually, you know, I've been under a lot of stress lately and I just haven't been able to sleep. You know, I'm just like up at night. I just, I just feel wired. I'm just thinking about everything I have to do. And, you know, I just wish I could sleep better. I just can't figure out what it is and why I can't sleep. <laughs> so I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, my mind, not to him, in my mind, I'm like, how about the meth? Maybe if we cut the meth down, you might be able to go to sleep. <laughs> and the delusion in his mind not to recognize the correlation between the meth and his lack of sleep is like what you guys do, right? You'd be like, oh, caffeine doesn't affect me or this doesn't affect me. And then why aren't you sleeping? Get off the meth, get off the caffeine a little bit, and you will sleep better, guys. So do not drink coffee in the afternoon. That's the first thing. Now, your response to that, your rebuttal to this is, well, wait a minute, Dr. Pinesett. I'm going to study at night. And in order to get to that study session, I need to drink coffee. How many of you guys are in that boat? How many of you guys are in that boat? <laughs> Don't laugh, Rosanna. You know what's up. This is the truth. How many of you guys drink the coffee in the evening because you're about to study late night? I got a powerhouse study session going tonight. Three hours, five hours in the library. Need this coffee. Get it done. Right? How many of you guys feel that way? <laughs> okay. You need to make baseline changes. I mentioned we got to get to the root of it, not the symptom. Some of y'all, right? Some of y'all, some of y'all, perfect. Sarah, one of my students knows what's up. If you need caffeine to moderately survive your study session late at night, 
maybe the issue isn't your lack of caffeination. Maybe the issue is you shouldn't be studying at night, right? And I tell my students, we value sleep. The other thing we value is our mornings. And we shift our big study sessions to the morning. And the reason that's useful is I just showed you guys in the chart is that your cortisol is peaking. And so by studying with the curve of our body, right, riding that wave, we amplify our ability to get things done, right? It's not the other way around. And if we look here, right, let me, let me zoom out now. I've done zoomed in for our other one. There we go. Okay. You guys see this here. So our normal curve is this blue, right? Our cortisol spike, our energy is up in the morning. We're feeling good. And we go here. When we study in the morning, we lean into this curve and we use our body's natural hormones to have the energy we need, the zest we need, the focus we need to get our studying done. Some of you guys are over here on this orange curve where you, <laughs> you try to create a false curve that is completely against what your body wants to do. And you try to pack all your studying in late at night and you waste all this good natural energy you got. And so what my students do and what I encourage all you guys to do is flip your studying to the morning. And when you do that, you're going to be more effective. And as you do that, right now, we're studying first thing in the morning. What's cool about this is that we're leaning into our body's natural hormones. So when we wake up, we're fresh, we're revitalized, we're ready. We're not stressed out. We're ready to go to make the day amazing. And so we have this inside energy from this cortisol, from our hormones, from the sleep we just had. We feel great. And we get up. The very first thing I want you guys to do, most of you guys, you guys brew that pot of coffee to get the day going, right? The eye opener, right? Forget that. Instead, what I want you to do, I want you to get out of bed, leave your pajamas on, okay? Don't even put no, don't even put no clothes on, wear your pajamas. If you sleep butt naked, then you might want to put some shorts on because that's nasty, you know, sit in your chair with no shorts on. But leave your pajamas on, don't get dressed, go to your desk, and I want you to sit down, I want you to put in an hour or two hours of studying using that natural energetic cortisol curve we're gonna have, get that studying started. Then, this is the cool thing, by doing that and avoiding your first cup of coffee when you first get started, you're using your own hormones, then after that tiring, exhausting, super intense first study session you have, it's now two hours later, an hour later, you've been up, right? Guess what you can do? You can take coffee at that time, right? Or you take a break at that time, and you have coffee maybe an hour or two later, and then that coffee gets you through your next study session, gets you through that afternoon lull. And so you're optimizing your caffeine for that. So at the beginning of this video, I said, listen, we're gonna talk about when you should take this caffeine, when you should take it, guys, the best time to do your caffeine is mid morning, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon. Why? Because it'll hit you, give you some pump to get through, right? As your cortisol starts to come down, that coffee starts to come up and get you the afternoon and you're using it wisely and you're getting the pump you need from it. So does that make sense to everybody? Not first thing in the morning, not in the evening. Get that studying done first. Get that coffee to get that hump when your energy is low. Bam, to get you to that next study session, get you to that next activity so you can get the job done. Yes, yes? Okay, so that's number one. We're just on tip number one of three. Are we all good so far? Are we good? Can I go into more detail or should we stop right here? Should we end it right here? I'm gonna end it right here. You guys are clearly bored. Let me know right now. You guys are not bored. You guys are with me. You guys understand what I'm saying right now? How this works. If you are with me, like this video right now, comment right now, or I'm leaving. I'm gonna leave right now because you guys are not entertained. We're 18 minutes in. Don't make me keep talking for nothing. Is everybody with me? We're live action. We're learning right now. Okay, yes, I see yes, I see yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, <laughs> the other thing I wanna say, which I actually thought was kind of funny, uh, <laughs> is that, so two crazy stats I looked up, which I did not expect, is that, uh, what would you guess? Okay, so I talk about how coffee in the evening is so bad. Uh, what would you guess is the percentage of adults who drink coffee after 6 p.m.? I was shocked at this stat. Shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I want to see if you guys would have guessed, because I would have never guessed it was this high. Oh, I guess, I'm, oh, I'm giving it away. I'm saying it's high. Gosh dang it. <laughs> yes, Justin, we're going to talk about work. We're going to talk about class. We're going to talk about third shift. Because people emailed me about that. Yes, I know you guys need that. We're just on tip number one. Can I get a second, please? Dang. Dang. Can I get, can I get loose? Okay, so I see 36%, 48%, 50%, 70%, 90%. I guess everybody's just picking a spot. It's like price is right. Everyone's going one higher than everybody else, okay? <laughs> so the study said 90% of adults consume caffeine in the afternoon as defined between noon and six. So that's 90% of people drink coffee afternoon. That's crazy. 
5% drink coffee after 6 p.m. That's nuts. Don't do that to yourself, guys. It's crazy. All right. So tip number two is to drink your coffee appropriately surrounding your study sessions. So what I see a lot of students do out of habit is they say, oh, I'm going to go to Starbucks and study. So they go over to Starbucks, buy their coffee, sit down and start sipping their coffee as they're about to study. I see people who brew a pot of coffee, right? Or do their Keurig, grab their coffee. They don't drink it. They take it with them to go study and they start drinking it as they're studying. Okay. That's the wrong way to caffeinate. We have to understand the, right? The dynamics, right? The kinetics of caffeine in our body and how quickly it kicks in and how we get the effect. And for many of you guys, how many of you guys study or suffer from studying or testing anxiety? How many of you guys are from generalized anxiety, right? All these things, right? And it's, and it's, amped up when we have to study or when we have to take a test. And so the mistake a lot of people make is they add caffeine to the mix and caffeine is an upper and it can take what was nervousness, what was a little unsettlement and make it crazy unbearable for you. And so what I want to encourage you guys to do is to walk your caffeine back away from your study session. So what I would recommend is consuming your caffeine. This is tip number two, consume your caffeine 30 to 90 minutes before you study. Why this is effective is twofold. One is it allows time for that caffeine to really kick in and to hit you. Because for so many of you guys, how many of you guys get into these loops where you're about to start studying, but you're like, oh, I got to psych myself up to study. I got to go on social media for three hours to get myself ready for this session right now, right? So what we want to do is we want to launch ourselves into studying by allowing our caffeine to hit before our assigned study time. So that way it becomes weird, right? It's weird. We're going to drink our coffee 39 minutes before. All of a sudden we start buzzing on that caffeine, start feeling good. We're energized. We're excited. We don't know why, but studying is coming up. So we're essentially mind freaking ourselves to think that we are excited, that we are energized to study. And it allows us to pump ourselves up into our study session as opposed to how many of you guys have done this? where you're sipping your coffee, waiting for the caffeine to kick in as you are exhausted studying the first couple of pages. Instead, we want to be amped up, excited, energized, going into our study session to make ourselves, right, get it done and get it done consistently and get it done at a high level. So 39 minutes before. So that's the first part. The second part of consuming your caffeine away from your study session is that you're not going to get the immediate caffeine rush during your studying. So you're a little nervous right? Things aren't going well. You've missed a couple problems. You're a little confused about what you're reading. And then all of a sudden that caffeine hits. And now you were a little nervous. You were a little unsettled about what you were seeing. And now you are full blown having a meltdown, right? How many of you guys have had to step away? I've done this before. I'll be honest with y'all. I'll be real, right? Where you're, 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 you're studying something and you're so mad that they would ever invent such a topic. This is how I was in calculus. I would get so mad while studying calculus. I'd be like, what the? F-? And I just have to get up from my desk and walk around the library and pace. Like, Mother- <laughs> like, if calculus was in this room right now, right? Because you're earth whooping, right? That's, what I, that's how I felt. That's how I felt about calculus. But, <laughs> right? But some, most time we're able to keep, take, take a deep breath, right? Keep a lid on it. Sometimes, sometimes we were able to. <laughs> well, the caffeine can take the lid off it. Okay. You'd be too hype, right? You'd be methed out, ready to, you know, punch on somebody. You study in calculus and then bam, they get a punch because they study in calculus, right? So we have to recognize that when you're drinking that caffeine right at the start of your study session, you're going to get hit with that rush and it's going to take what's already a nerve wracking situation and tip, tip you over and make you worse. And so we want to take that caffeine in front. So we get that, that, that pump up ahead to work for us, not against us. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, A little tidbit, side note, is if you guys have a long study session planned or you have a long exam, like I just took my boards last week, you have a long exam, drink green tea. And I'm going to do a whole video about green tea. You guys know, everybody knows I'm I'm a green tea fan, but I'm going to go on a huge video about the benefits of green tea over coffee. But one of the things that works for green tea is that it's actually because of its molecular composition and its acidity or alkalotic state more, more accurately. It actually lasts longer. So with green tea, you don't get such a spike and you get a longer tail to it. So if you have like a long test coming up, green tea is actually a better way to go because you can get a more sustained release from it. So something to think about. All right. That's tip number two. Everybody good with that? So tip number one, 
no coffee first thing in the morning. No coffee after 3 p.m. Tip number two, time your coffee 30 to 90 minutes before you actually need it so we can launch into our whatever our activity is and we cannot be held down by that caffeine and be made more nervous by it. And our third tip, y'all, is do not drink coffee every single day. Hear me and hear me now. Too many of you guys are habitual, mindless, unintentional caffeinators. And as I constantly tell you guys, if you want to be successful, if you want to be the highest peak performer you can be, you have to live intentionally and with purpose. So before I carry out any action, I ask myself, wait, what is the purpose? What is the function? How does this move me closer to my goal? Or how does this make me happier? How does this make me stronger? Many of you guys do tons of actions where you don't ask yourselves that. So I want you to write that down. Write down, say, hey, every day I'm gonna ask myself, what's the purpose? What's the function? What's the objective? Why am I doing this? And when it comes to caffeine, ask yourself, why the heck, how many of you guys got friends? I won't even ask you to call on yourself. How many of you guys have friends who you never see without their tumbler full of coffee, right? They literally, oh, I finished my coffee. Let me go get another one. How many of you guys have friends like that who literally are ser- They're like, like chain smokers? They're chain caffeinators. Chain caffeinating, <laughs> right? Like, oh man, I got so many Starbucks points. Your friend who will buy you Starbucks because they got free points, they've got a problem. You need to have an intervention. Set them down. Because I've had a Starbucks point thing for a long time. I ain't never got no free coffee. Starbucks is stingy. So if they're getting free coffee. They're drinking way too much coffee. Help them. Help them, right? <laughs> Help them out. <laughs> Don't drink coffee every day. Why should we not drink coffee every single day, all day? Right? Why should we be so, so unintentional with our coffee? Why should we not do that? Because guys, the whole point of coffee is to make yourself hyper-focused, hyper-engaged, hyper-effective, hyper-productive. That's the point of it. That is the objective. If you aren't getting a rush from coffee, so if you're one of those people and you say to yourself, oh man, I need my coffee before I can function. That means you're drinking too much coffee too regularly because now, instead of getting a boost from it, it just allows you to live. And so I want you to think about this. Here's the baseline of function is right here. This is just, I'm alive, my eyes are open, and I'm somewhat listening to what's going on. This is here. Many of you guys use coffee to get to that line. And when you don't have coffee, you're dysfunctional, you're angry, you're irritable, you're unfocused, you drop below that line. If you use coffee right and you only drink coffee for a purpose to boost you, then what happens is, is when you drink coffee, you're functional without it. But then when you drink it, you go up here and you're a super performer. You're a super effective student. You are laser focused. That's the difference in the separator. And the reason that occurs is, right, it's tolerance. Coffee is a drug, as I said earlier. Some of you guys have built up caffeine tolerance, and so it doesn't even phase you, which is why you need the double shot, triple shot, quadruple shot, coffee all day, just to feel a little bit of a buzz, but not a real good focus, just enough to function. And so we have to change around how our coffee's going to make ourselves high-functioning coffee users, functional coffee users to take us to superhuman levels, right? To domination levels, not just survival levels. That's a big, big difference. A big, big difference. And I, I heard Elon Musk give a talk, and I don't know where it was. It was a question. Someone asked him a while back. And I, again, I'm going to mess up the quote or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. Elon Musk is a smart guy. And what he says is that he purposely picks when he drinks caffeine because when he was not drinking caffeine, it made him feel like he had ADHD. And when he gets caffeine, it makes him very linear and very focused, and it allows his brain to access parts that make him more creative, make him more functional. And what I want you guys to do is aspire to be caffeinators in the, in the realm of Elon Musk. Sending people to the moon, y'all, right? Does this make sense? So we want to use our caffeine with intention, not doing it every day because we don't want to lose the function of it and let alone become dysfunctional ourselves. We want to become superhuman with our caffeine. And like I said, I didn't drink coffee all through undergrad, all through medical school, just in residency. And even now, I don't know if you guys, who's ever heard of Happy Lemon? So I'm not a boba drinker, right? I, I think boba's weird. Like it's not like actually, I love tapioca, like I love rice pudding. 
but boba is like too chewy and rubbery. It's like it like takes away from the flavor of the drink for me. And so we were talking about boba one day at, at one of the circle centers, and the surgeon was like, "Oh, I'm gonna expose you to boba." And they ordered me a drink, and they made me feel like they were gonna order me a boba. But the drink came, and there was no boba in it. And when they told me what the drink was, I'm like, "Oh yeah, it's a mango matcha," and I wasn't listening effectively, right? Clearly, <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to keep patient alive. I wasn't listening correctly. So when I went out after the case to drink my drink, it was this orange, beautiful looking drink, mango slices in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this one place called Happy Linen. And uh, I was like, this is, looks incredible. And I taste it and I'm like, oh, this is heaven. This is incredible, blah, blah, blah. And I'm drinking it and I'm halfway through the cup. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm halfway through the cup and I start to have tingling going up the back of my spine. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a little weird. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm getting all jittery and I'm like, why the heck is this this smoothie making me so anxious like this? It's almost like I had caffeine. And then I s- thought about it for a second. I'm like, oh, they said mango matcha. Matcha as in super strong green tea. <laughs> and I was like, no, guys, you've poisoned me because it was four o'clock and I drank mango matcha. <laughs> it was our last case. I get in the car and I drove home in what felt like warp speed. Like I was in a freaking space shuttle, whipping through traffic, right? My legs are all moving all fast. It's craziness. I get home. I'm talking a mile a minute, even back when I talk now. And I said, what's wrong with you? I'm like, they gave me caffeine in the afternoon. I was hyped. And kid you not, guys, I was up the entire night. I had like restless leg syndrome. I couldn't get comfortable. Like, could not go to sleep. And it's all because they poisoned me with mango matcha late in the afternoon. But the point of that is, is that when I do have caffeine, guys, it really affects me. I really get a boost from it. And so, like I said, I had my board exams last week and I had some green tea right before. And guys, I'm telling you, my exam was four hours. You are, you have the option to take a 20 minute break in between the the first two hours and two hours. I took no break, went straight through, crushed it. I felt good. I felt energized. I felt focused. Why? A, because I prepared. That's the first thing, right? B, I got sleep the night before, right? We did coaching the night before for like an hour and a half. And then I immediately after coaching, I went to sleep and got good sleep. And then I woke up, caffeinated properly my green tea first thing in the morning, right? And I had bacon, which also helps. I don't know if that's <clears throat> bacon has some caffeine in it, maybe. I don't know, right? And then I went to my test and I dominated and I crushed it and I rolled through and I felt great about it. And so for all of you guys, recognize you guys can all be great students. And there are a lot of factors that come together to make you a great student or make you a poor student. So if you are not performing at the level you want to be performing at, there are little tweaks and subtle tweaks you can make like your caffeine, but you also have to bring all these little tweaks together and make big change in your life. And that's what I'm always going to be stressing with you guys is like, yes, we can do little one-off tips or 30 minutes on caffeine. But for many of you guys, if you're trying to have, right, if you have big goals, right, you need big skills, you need big knowledge, right? You need big discipline all these things, you need to make big changes in your life. And so I'm just gonna continue to, to, to harp on this every single time we get together. What big changes are you making? What big shifts are you making? What big new knowledge are you taking in? What big skills are you developing today to help you get better and to reach your goals? And that's where we have to be focused on, guys. And so that's what we're gonna be doing now. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this live stream. If you guys have, this is live action, y'all. 33 minutes, y'all, live action, live action, live action. If you've enjoyed this, guys, it takes a lot of effort. I'm sweating, right? Take a second, like this video. Take a second, share it with a friend, right? Let's get this word out. Let's help people be their best, right? It's not about crushing other people. It's about being so great in yourself that you don't worry about other people, that you don't worry about other people. That's what it's about, guys, okay? And what is this? Rashab says, make your five pillars course free. Never, never. Why? Because you guys don't appreciate free. I'll give you the perfect example. We've been on here for 30 something minutes. Do you guys know how people have logged on and logged off in that 35 minutes? Way too many. Why? Because I'm sitting here asking you to wait 35 minutes for a message. (laughs) So if I gave you the five pillars course, which is dozens of hours of content and it was free, none of y'all would do it. You got no skin in the game. You got to sacrifice, you got to pay for it. With that being said, I am going to be offering not even discounts. I'm going to be lowering the prices. I, 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 
I'm going to be lowering the prices of actually all my courses. And the reason is, is because I've always said it's about serving students. And I recognize, again, you guys continue to have a difficult time. You continue to have a difficult time financially, <laughs> mentally, skills wise, everything in your lives. And so I'm always here to be here for you guys, to support you guys. So in the next week, you're going to see, you go to my website, you're going to see everything's going to be discounted across the board to help you guys out during this difficult time, again, to always serve students. It's very, very important to me that I'm helping students. So I always, like anytime I get a, like I start making more money, I'm a doctor, right? I discount courses. <laughs> All my students know, right? Because I'm trying to help you guys be successful. And I'll close with this before we really wrap things up. Yes, I charge money for my courses and my coaching. Why? Because my knowledge, my expertise, and my time is valuable. Is valuable. Is valuable. Just because I charge for things doesn't mean I'm here to take advantage of students. But to properly serve you and invest my time, there has to be financial compensation for me to even keep my website up and running. And so I think it's really important to point out because I've been noticing there's a lot of threads about me on, on you know, all these different websites about me. But I just want you guys to understand it is what it is. It ain't what it ain't. And I care about people who care about themselves and who want to get better and who are willing to stay here for 36 minutes with me and listen to me help them. Yes, yes. All right, y'all. So all that being said, I'm Dr. Pines and I'm the study doc. This is my channel. This is the study doc show. I will be here live action every single week helping you guys out. You can also catch us on the podcast. If this is your first time here. Like I said, subscribe, tune in and take a second guys and share this with your social network. Let people know that, hey, this guy's out here. He's spending a lot of time this afternoon putting it together for us to enlighten us and to help us move forward. And we'll be back again soon with another live for you guys. So thank you so much. If you're ready to take that leap, as we talked about, get to my website. It is the studydoc.com, T-H-E, studydoc.com. And I thank you guys all for showing up. Jacob, what up in the building, right? Everybody have a great day, a great evening, and uh, be productive, right? There's a lot of negativity floating around. People worry about COVID. Don't worry about no COVID. Worry about what you can control, which is your grades, and more specifically, your effort. Effort, 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 effort. Effort wins, and it's easy to control, y'all. Get your effort up. And we talked about today about caffeine. And what is caffeine about? It's about getting your energy up. So that way you can put in that effort. So pay attention to this stuff, guys. Get better. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for joining me. How do we go? Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys are going to let me get out of here without saying it, y'all. You know I'm the Dodge Darn Goat. You know what it is. How do we end every single session, guys? Pay attention. I wear it on the shirt to cue you in so you can recognize I'm going to penetrate your subconscious mind and get you into some of this. No excuses. Just dominate, guys. Stop making excuses. Start dominating today, y'all. Get it. See you guys next time. That's it for another episode of the Study Doc Show. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, thestudydoc.com. Grab a free ebook, sign up for a free webinar. And if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.